script of Star Trek 2009 in itself has some quite well written dialogue, decent characterization, and exciting action set pieces. It's an overall enjoyable film, but has some deeply rooted plot holes that disallow the current plot from ever working. In this video, we're going to take a look at the biggest ones and rewrite the basic chain of events. The main problem with the story is that it's a man versus man main plot, and the second man, aka the antagonist, has very flimsy motivations. Not only in the basic premise of his motivations, but also in the way that he carries them out, as pointed out in great detail in my previous video. The entire movie would have to change because this integral part of it is flawed. It's not so much that the story around it is bad, but the foundation is bad. It's similar to a man building a huge luxurious mansion on a sandy beach that will get wiped away, when a few hundred feet back he has a suitable place to lay a concrete foundation. But first, I have yet another nitpick. If the crew has to ask, then Nero would have to ask, are they even shooting at us? As opposed to getting blown away by one tiny ship. Nero could come through the same wormhole, except it would use up all their fuel or drain their core because the ship is ill-equipped for wormhole travel. Similar to this scene from Halo 2. Report! Both engine cores have spun to zero. We're drifting. Archer pods are cold. I'll need to rekey the system. Do it, and find out where we are. The ship's drive core still operates in the same way that present day ships do, but... You could double up your rotations. Focus the repulsor energy through ionized plasma channels. They could be adrift for several years and run dangerously low on food. This would allow for loyalists who know that nobody else could have done better, and prefer to be on the winning side, and rebellious members of the crew to clash opinions and phasers. The resulting quashing of that coup would leave more food, but an uneasy balance of power since they don't have enough to last forever. The Federation could then come across Nero while he desperately tries to find out where he is and what's going on. The starships in the Federation would be out of date relative to those from his time, and he would wonder if they are some sort of separatist movement. After figuring out what's going on, Nero would have to tell them what happened to Romulus, and the Federation would assist in locating a new planet. The planet would be extremely rich in resources, so his mining vessel would be quite helpful in supplementing the Romulan economy, easing their transition into a new world. Nero would then, of course, be put on some sort of board of directors in order to help oversee the colonization due to the fact that he has intrinsic knowledge of what happens to Romulus. The red matter, which Nero would know how to mine, and it could be some cool futuristic fake science sort of way, like gets harvested by funneling photons given off by some extremely high frequency radiation, or electromagnetic wave given off only by certain stars. This would serve as a power source and allow the movie to address the dangers of nuclear reactors. Just as red matter is an extremely efficient but very dangerous power source that could be used as a weapon, so is nuclear power. They could mention that while seemingly necessary, it is also dangerous, and that they've had some lone nut get his hands on some, and he destroyed a world. And while they've taken great measures to prevent a repeat incident, there's still a risk of a repeat incident. The movie would be addressing a modern problem in the context of a grand sci-fi universe, which is good. Klingons could eventually discover the Romulans had settled there, and attack it as it's the ground of some sacred battle to them, like the Germanic tribes of Gaul. The Klingons could launch a surprise attack, taking half a dozen Federation ships hostage and holding them ransom. In return, they would demand that the Romulans hand over their colony world and their huge ship, or they'd kill the Federation prisoners. Nero would not accept this, as his loyalty is first to the Romulan Empire, and he wouldn't put them at a disadvantage by giving them this huge ship. The Klingons would accept nothing less, and the Federation wouldn't be able to accept the loss of that many people. Nero also wouldn't be able to just use his huge ship to destroy them, as the Klingons are aboard Federation vessels and Nero couldn't just kill them without causing significant fallout. A three-way stalemate would then ensue, and tensions would rise as the Federation continues to try to bargain down Nero to give up the planet, and he gets more and more offended and frustrated that they keep demanding this. Nero and the Romulans would then adopt an isolationist attitude, like the Geth in Mass Effect. Kirk, being the captain of the Enterprise, with the same lead-up excluding his cheating and receiving demerits, would be impatient and suggest a stealth rescue. This would be highly risky and out of the question according to his superiors, and a standoff would still be engaged. Future Spock, however, 
would at this point be discovered drifting near a Federation planet on an advanced ship created by the best Vulcan and human scientists, kind of like the Normandy. Spock would have come out of the same wormhole as Nero a few days later, because the wormhole had not moved its trajectory. He would be piloting an advanced ship created by the best Vulcan and human scientists, kind of like the Normandy from Mass Effect. That same group of scientists would have also just perfected transwarp beaming. It's important that this is top of the line, as Nero's simple mining vessel would not have this. From there, they would give the green light to Kirk, and they would use this new, extremely accurate beaming technology to take the Klingon and Federation ships one by one by jamming each's communications and either killing or stunning their bridge crews. There could be a complication on the second to last Federation ship, and a battle between the Federation ships and the Klingon Armada would ensue. Kirk would then call reinforcements that are waiting for his signal in a nearby system, and as the rest of the Federation fleet is warped in, Kirk would be saving the last Federation ship, and the Federation fleet would defeat the Klingon Armada. Kirk and his crew would be given medals, and the narrative could allude to an uneasy future between the Romulans and the Federation. You could even have a neat subplot in the sequel where Kirk and the Enterprise attempt to reopen communication with Nero, and consequently the Romulans. Nero would learn by a slip of the tongue that young Spock is aboard, and you could get some neat scenes out of that from coy discontent to a physical confrontation between Nero and Spock. This is just one idea for what the Star Trek reboot could have been. Keep in mind that I wrote this off the top of my head in 40 minutes with very little editing, so I definitely would not expect a team of writers working for a $150 million movie to be able to do the same.